So, um, so guys, welcome back to the Bragg Seminar. Um, today we are very happy to have um, my old friend Christian Garay, who's going to speak to us about uh, inflection polynomials of linear series on super elliptic curves. So Christian, please. Uh, thank you to all the team, organizing team of uh, Brazilian Algebraic Geometry Seminar. Uh, é um gusto para mim uh, voltar no, no Brasil, uh, mesmo desta forma uh, online. Eu vou falar em inglês porque eu acho que meu português não é, não é, é ótimo para fazer uma palestra. Então, uh, Obrigado pelo convite e uh, eu, vou, eu vou trocar agora para o inglês. Uh, thank you uh, to the organizing team and I will speak today about um, some uh, polynomials which appear in the study of uh, inflection uh, points of some uh, algebraic curves uh, defined over a uh, very general uh, uh, situations. So first I would like to start with a quick um, uh, explanation about the talk. Uh, after this uh, slide, everything will be uh, filling up the details. So uh, what, uh, what uh, we are going to do is to explore uh, the inflectionary behavior of some particular linear series defined on families of marked super elliptic curves. And how are we going to do this? Uh, using uh, crucially the super elliptic projection that we have at our hands, uh, which is just a map from the curve uh, to some uh, to the projective line, uh, I will use uh, standard fixed coordinated coordinates in the projective line x and y, and I will also specify that uh, the marked point of my curve uh, is sent to to the infinity point uh, at the bottom. So uh, the definition of inflection polynomial is very simple. You just look at the at the inflection points associated to this linear series on the curve, and then you project them to the, to the projective line, and you ask uh, yourself about uh, uh, if the projection lies or not in the branching locus of, uh, of your projection of your super elliptic projection. Uh, if it lies on the, on the, on the branching locus, then you discard it, otherwise you keep it. And you take uh, the linear factors, uh, having these projections uh, as, uh, as constants. And that's for you, the inflection polynomial in five minutes. Uh, so uh, the definition is very clear and easy, but the problem is to compute it. So uh, in this talk, I will give you some determinantal expressions for the left-hand side and uh, some properties uh, which are uh, which we find interesting. And the game is to come up with the factorization of the left-hand left side. And, and yes, uh, the actual roots of this polynomial. So about the field, uh, for the rest of the talk, uh, you may suppose that this is either the reals or that the characteristic is prime uh, with respect to the degree of the projection. Uh, if, you, if you want, I mean, you are not uh, forced to think about positive characteristic. Uh, and if you feel comfortable with complex numbers, that, that's allowed to. And well, uh, I mentioned some families in my abstract, um, the, this inflectionary families uh, when we introduce some parameters uh, upon which our curves depend um, a finite number then these polynomials too inflection polynomials become dependent on them and 
the hypersurfaces or the algebraic varieties defined by them are what we call inflationary varieties, and they uh, somehow uh, keep track of the global behavior of this uh, inflection as we vary the curve over a flat family. And finally, the announcement is that we have this, uh, we have put this uh, uh, in the archive recently, uh, one month ago, and this is joint work with, um, with my dear friend Ethan, with uh, Ignacio Chanhu and Tony Shaska, and you may have, uh, you may ask for, for the reference if you want, and if you are interested. Okay, so that's the talk for you. If you, this is uh, the global content, and I will be up uh, filling up details from now on. Uh, I have mainly three sections. The first one is to introduce some some uh, concepts about inflection. The second one is to give you the explicitly which one are the inflection polynomials and some properties of them, and then uh, talk about uh, a little bit about uh, inflectionary curves. Uh, that's that's to say when we make uh, our family dependent on just one parameter. So uh, in this first section, I will introduce some generalities uh, that's uh, about linear series and algebraic curves and this, their associated inflection divisors. So uh, classical algebraic geometry, we study curves over the complex numbers uh, using maps to predictive space. And these maps are determined by linear series. A linear series is a pair of a line bundle of degree D defined over your curve and some uh, subspace of, of global sections, uh, which has uh, the dimension R plus one. Uh, from now on, uh, R plus one is, is fixed also. It, it doesn't have to be the whole space. Uh, you may choose uh, particular subspaces if you want. So uh, the main player, uh, here is uh, that uh, once you choose a basis for your vector space, you have access to a specific section of this line bundle, which is displayed here. Uh, it's called, uh, the section is called the ground skin. And um, here I give you the receipt to compute it uh, concretely. Uh, you take your basis, it has uh, R plus one elements and you take a point on your curve. The curve is uh, smooth and proper. Uh, well, complex uh, curves, uh, just uh, smooth and projective and LP, LP is just uh, the stock of your line bundle uh, at your point, it has a local parameter and you choose a local parameter for the vanishing functions at P. Uh, and then the, this is the expression. Expression is what you what you uh, expect. Just to take uh, iterat iterated derivatives of your basis, uh, varying from zero to R. And then uh, that's that's the the expression of the of the stock. And then you glue back together these stocks, and you get a global section. And the zeros of this section is what we call the inflection divisor of L B. So the inflection divisor is an effective divisor of the same degree as the line bundle, and it can be expressed as a formal combination of points together with some multiplicity. And the multiplicity just records the fundamental local invariant of this linear series, which is the total deviation of the p-vanishing orders of your family of, of, of uh, global sections uh, of, uh, of this line bundle from the generic sequence of vanishing, which is the standard one. Okay, so um, now that's uh, the usual case of a complex geometry. Now we want to change from F equals C to F equal F, that's to say to a general uh, field. Uh, so let me take a, cur a curve over a field uh, F and I take a, a line bundle, which is defined uh, on the curve, but over F. So uh, there are some extra conditions that the line bundle has to satisfy in order to be, uh, to be considered here. Um, anyways, uh, we have two main questions. Uh, the first one is, uh, if we can make uh, somehow a sense of the previous study over this general case, and if that's the case, what's the, uh, how are the weights uh, associated to this uh, uh, vanishing sequence uh, uh, locally uh, on the points of the curve? Uh, 
And the second is uh, how this uh, behavior uh, varies when we make it the family, the curve vary in a family. So we will uh, describe some progress uh, on this curve, on these questions. And basically uh, I will give you here the ingredients uh, just to, to guide the curve. Uh, as I said, it's a marked super elliptic curve. I will, I will be more explicit uh, uh, in a minute, but uh, now you have to be aware that uh, it is just an algebraic curve with a marked point. The marked point is just the premature of infinity and you choose a degree of ramification and, uh, and this is uh, a projection to the projective space. Uh, I, I, will be, I will give more details later. But uh, the linear series that we are going to consider are multiples of this mark point. Uh, observe that uh, we are asking uh, the mark point to be irrational. Otherwise, uh, yes, here we have this condition. It says that uh, I, at, at least there should be a mark, an uh, irrational point uh, on the curve, and I will uh, specify it to be the pre match of infinity. That's uh, just. Uh, formalism to, to keep things uh, better behave. So the linear series are multiples of this point. And well, that's the line bundle. And for the particular subspace, uh, I will tell you explicitly which one are the spaces which uh, we are consider, we are going to consider. And under this situation, uh, over the algebraic closure of your field, the support of your inflection divisor, associated to this situation is supported on some special fibers. Uh, particularly, uh, so let me, let me be explicit here. To take uh, uh, your inflection divisor associated to the situation, its support is contained in, uh, in some points, uh, this uh, set is contained in P1. And it, it is uh, formed by the branching locus and the roots of the inflection polynomial. So uh, in this sense, um, the inflection polynomial that I introduced uh, some slides ago uh, helps you to find uh, the inflectionary behavior of this particular linear series. And uh, I repeat for you here uh, the definition of, uh, of inflection polynomial is just uh, the product of all the linear factors uh, varying over the projections of uh, of the linear of the inflection points of your linear series, right? So this is somehow like uh, a tautology. I am defining the inflection polynomial so that it keeps track of the inflection points. But the point here is that we have a strong uh, statements about the, the the structure of these polynomials. Uh, so it is not the definition. What is interesting, it is uh, it is the properties that uh, these guys have. Okay, uh, if you have any question or comment, please do not hesitate in interrupting me. Um, okay, so uh, uh, let me give you a basic example. Um, uh, as I told you, we use these inflection polynomials uh, to study questions about F rational points of the inflection divisor of this uh, linear series. And uh, for the simplest case, let me consider uh, degree two and the curve of genus one. This is uh, like, uh, I, I believe this is the simplest case. And also for, for the degree or for the ingredients of the linear series, I am going to consider the, the complete linear series. Uh, uh, L times uh, the mark point where L is, uh, is any number and I'm going to consider uh, the whole space of sections. Uh, under these circumstances, uh, this, uh, um, this pair is an elliptic curve and uh, it turns out that the inflection divisor associated to this situation uh, uh, is precisely the set of uh, torsion points of uh, order L uh, of this elliptic curve. And uh, in this case, uh, these inflection polynomials that I'm, I am describing uh, coincide with the division polynomial. 
defined for elliptic curve, which uh, is a tool uh, designed for helping us to compute uh, torsion points of elliptic curves. So for example, here I am, let me give you a drawing about the real situation. Uh, so to, uh, as I told you, uh, the case F equal R is particularly interesting. Uh, so I have, a, I have two situations. The, the situations to the left in the, in the left-hand side uh, is when you have one connected component of your real locus. Uh, so this is a real elliptic curve. Uh, and uh, if you have uh, a Bayer-Stress equation with just one real root, uh, this is going to ramify over just real root and, and infinity, and it, this gives you a connected component. So uh, in this case, I am displaying here also the projection. Uh, this is pi, right? This is the projection pi. And this is two to one. And um, so you have here the real locus. And since uh, in this case, uh, this is torsion points, uh, uh, you have uh, L square uh, inflection points, right? Um, what, I'm, what I'm trying to tell you here is that uh, out of those uh, L square inflection points, you may have L uh, inflection points, which are located on your real connected component here. And then the other guys, uh, uh, the other, uh, the remaining inflection points or torsion points are going to be scattered around the torus. But in some sense, the, what the inflection polynomial tells uh, is doing for you is uh, projecting them, projecting them to, to the line. And then you look at here at their coordinates and form the factors uh, of the local coordinate X here with all these projections and solving this, pol this inflection polynomial uh, tells you information about the fiber over which uh, uh, the inflection points lie, right? So just to complement the analysis made here, um, let me switch to the case in which uh, your uh, real elliptic curve has two connected components. This is when your uh, real polynomial uh, has three real roots. Uh, so you have two connected components. You know, remember that I have always a mark point. This is my mark point. Yeah, this one. And the line bundle is L times this point, right? So uh, the behavior that I want to convey here is that uh, you have two cases. Uh, if L is odd, then you are going to have L points on the rest on the component which contains the point at infinity and none on the other. And if L is even, then you are going to have uh, L points on each component, and also the same analysis that we made uh, before uh, on the case of one component uh, remains valid. I mean, uh, we project to P1 and we project all the inflection points, uh, and then we form the polynomial and we try to factorize it. Okay, so uh, now uh, let me go uh, to the second section. Uh, I will uh, try to define uh, these polynomials for you in more uh, general cases, but not so general, uh, just to exemplify uh, the properties. Okay, so uh, here I want to stress uh, how we were able to go to uh, such a general situation in which the field uh, uh, practically becomes irrelevant. Uh, in some sense. And uh, what makes things work, as I said here uh, in the title, uh, is combinatorics. So uh, the key insight is that we consider super elliptic curves as combinatorial objects specified by a pair. The pair is just a number, which is n, and a collection of d points. 
uh, n is equal or greater than two is the degree and uh, uh, this uh, map has to be totally ramified over uh, the the detuple specified by f which is the second uh, datum uh, in my definition of a superelliptic curve and infinity so i throw i throw in infinity in f but since I will discard it uh, later, so I don't consider it as being part of the information uh, of my curve. And uh, of course it should be a tally elsewhere. So it is totally, it has, uh, it is, there is a dichotomy, either it is totally ramified or it is a tally. And the, the space or the lieu or the locus of the total ramification is specified by the second item of your combinatorial information. And uh, if you make some other special technical assumption, such that, uh, as I told you, the uh, well, this is new, uh, the greatest common divisor of the degree and the number of points is one. And again, uh, that uh, the map is totally ramified over infinity. And this is your mark point. Then uh, once you take away this mark point from your curve, you have access to a, a very nice presentation of uh, the fin piece that results, uh, which is just uh, adding as an nth root to y. y is the second coordinate of my affine space. And uh, I turn uh, my d to play of information, which, is in, which in principle is just uh, t points on p1. Or even better, you can think about this uh, as being uh, just the objects which are not equal uh, before interpreting them as points in some uh, projective line over some particular field. Anyways, uh, you turn uh, this uh, data into a polynomial. Uh, and that's your equation for you. And uh, uh, I mean, this is great because uh, what results from here it's truly the, the, the things that makes make uh, the thing that makes this uh, work because um, under these assumptions that I have just discussed here, you can compute a concrete uh, monomial basis for the space of sections over the curve for this line bundle, right? Uh, so you take your favorite L. Well, some condition may apply as always, but I don't want to be too technical. Uh, so you choose uh, some convenient uh, multiplicity. And then uh, you ask yourself, uh, can I find a convenient basis of global sections for this uh, line bundle over the curve? And the answer is yes. Uh, so uh, uh, what I want to stress here is that my our basis is not uh, does not depend on F. So this is why we call it a combinatorial or monomial uh, should be a more appropriate term basis. And also well, the, bond, the bounds uh, over which um, these guys vary. I'm sorry, here, uh, yeah. So this is the key point. These bounds are also determined by your data, right? Uh, L is the multiplicity that you are uh, specifying. Uh, N is the degree of your projection and D is the number of points over which you are ramifying. And then you solve this uh, polytopal equation. This, uh, this, is a, this is just an intersection of hyperplanes and this is going to, to give you, uh, I, I mean, this is an intersection of half spaces and this is going to give you uh, the monomials which generate this, uh, this basis. Okay, so, um, let me, um, sorry, let me go back uh, to my discussion. So again, uh, I want to stress that uh, the fact that allowed us to go uh, very general in this case, what is the particular uh, composition of this monomial basis, uh, which is defined over, uh, over any field in fact, over any ring. And now let me uh, 
perhaps I can go back some slides uh, just to show you uh, the expression for the stock of the Bronskian. Uh, here, uh, I choose a particular basis for my linear series, and then I used the derivation uh, with respect to a local parameter to iterate the derivatives uh, and trying to cook up uh, a stock uh, with respect to standard uh, derivations, right? But since uh, now we are working on on characteristic, uh, arbitrary characteristic, if you want, I mean, we are not forced to remain in characteristic zero. Uh, there is a, a, another trick that we can do is uh, to change uh, all derivatives by, or derivations by uh, has derivations. So this is the second, um, This is the second point or uh, important point in this discussion is that uh, you can make uh, your formalism work over arbitrary characteristic if you change the way in which you derive your functions. And uh, since we are away from the ramification locus, so I have not stressed this uh, hard enough. Uh, as I told you, this, there are uh, so there are two cases. Either uh, the projection of your inflection point lies on the branching uh, locus or not. If it lies on the branching locus, then uh, in this talk we are not going to consider it. Uh, that case is also interesting, but we are not going to to discuss it. Uh, on the other hand, if the projection of your reflection point lies away from the ramification of the branching locus, then uh, you consider it. And uh, these points, uh, uh, the local parameter uh, for all these points are, is x. So uh, uh, you can uh, consider derivation with respect to x uh, for your stocks. And now uh, you take any point away from this uh, ramification point uh, and you define uh, the, by hand the stock of uh, Hasse-Gronskian as, uh, as a below, and uh, it is exactly the same um, definition uh, that I give you before, uh, just to, with the with the replacement of the uh, of the derivation, right? So um, here, uh, of course, uh, the basis is fixed because we want to use the particular structure or combinatorial structure of the base. So uh, my Gronskians will be with respect to these bases. And now let me uh, give you a concrete example of what happens in this case. Uh, as for that, uh, let me uh, give you a pictorial expression of, uh, of this uh, basis for the case uh, uh, n equals two, right? This this particular combinatorial basis when n equals two. So when n equals two, uh, you also fix the genus of your curve, uh, which of course depends on the number of, of ramification points that you take, which is d. So d is this guy here, and uh, l is a number which is bigger than uh, this genus. So uh, there is a difference, there is a subtle difference between the monomial basis and the enumeration that, I, that I'm giving uh, in order to do the computation. So uh, you have a first row, the row on the bottom is, uh, consists of L plus one functions, which is uh, from X to the zero to X to the L, L is the, the number that you are fixing. And then uh, when you go up on the first row, you go from uh, y x to the zero up to y x to the l g minus one. Maybe if I do this, it's better. So basically uh, this example is illustrative because uh, basically what we are doing uh, in general is uh, just increasing this uh, arrangement uh, to, the to the right and up, 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 upwards. So for example, if you decide uh, N 
to be three, then uh, the monomial basis uh, will, will add uh, another line here. So this is n equals zero, this is n equal one. And then if n equals three, then you add one more here, n equal, I'm sorry, this is two, right? And then if you decide also to, to do L, for example, take L prime bigger than L, then you extend your arrangement to, to take L plus one up to L prime, right? This here are dots. But uh, you are not constrained to, to pick n equal three. I mean, you can pick here uh, any, any n. And uh, the result is that uh, you are going to go up to n minus one, and then you are going to have some kind of stairs, right? And all the monomials lying behind these stairs are is uh, the monomial basis B, L, N. Again, uh, here uh, D is uh, somehow, uh, here the D, uh, this D is uh, somehow disguised uh, in the genus. But uh, the, since the genus depends on D, uh, D appears in this construction. And also I may use this uh, drawing to tell you uh, which are the other spaces that interest us. Um, because I told you that it was not uh, completely, uh, you are not forced to take the whole linear series. Uh, so uh, the other spaces that we consider are truncations of these particular uh, stairs. So for example, one, uh, particular subspace which uh, you can consider is uh, start removing uh, functions from above up to uh, the last one. And if you have uh, another uh, line, for example, n equals two, and you have here more points, then uh, we, do, uh, we do the same. You are allowed to start erasing uh, monomials up to you uh, keep uh, the leftmost one. So uh, this is the kind of uh, incomplete linear series in which we are interested. And this is the kind of incomplete linear series to which our theory applies. Not just taking all the monomials, but also you are allowed to, to erase uh, some of them. Uh, starting from uh, from uh, left uh, from rightmost part, you start deleting these guys, and you get some sort of of, of, of flags. Anyways, uh, this is some uh, particular specifications about the uh, about the problem. And then, uh, well, uh, I have to go to the technical part now. The technical part is that. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I take the in the leftmost part. So uh, for, for this is for the case uh, n equals two, which is the basic case. Uh, this is the hyperelliptic case. So uh, I pick two numbers g and l uh, as above, and uh, my polynomial satisfies a functional equation. Uh, specified by relation four. And it says that if you compute the hasse and uh, I mean, uh, by definition, then it may be expressed as uh, a factor uh, of F and Y to some powers uh, times uh, the polynomial. And uh, this is the definition. So, uh, it is a determinantal definition because uh, because uh, the, this is a determinant, right? And uh, it tells you that uh, the factor that completes this functional equation is the is the, the, the is the inflection polynomial. Okay, so uh, there is a particular case. 
the particular case uh, is the following. If you uh, just uh, do, do not take L to be general, uh, I mean, do not, you don't take L very far away from G, but uh, just one step ahead of G, then what you are doing is just uh, computing the G plus times G plus two times the Hasse derivative of your variable Y. Uh, and remember that the basic relation that you have to keep in mind is that Y satisfies this equation, right? So from this equation, you can uh, take the G plus time, G plus two time derivative of with respect to X. And then uh, from four, you deduce this equation. And this is uh, the polynomial which arises from this construction for this particular case. And this guy is called atomic since the other instances, I mean, for L or bigger than G plus one, you can compute the, the Hasse polynomial from this case as some determined. So once you know these guys, uh, you can compute some determinantal formulas and plug them in and obtain, for example, L equal G plus two, and L equal G plus three, etc. So this, is tell, this tells you that uh, the inflection of this, uh, so for example, well, let, me, let me be clear here. Uh, for example, when you do L equal G plus one, this corresponds to the fact of erasing everywhere. Uh, all the members, but this one. So if you now, and this uh, inflection polynomial is computing the inflection of this linear series. Now, if you want to add another guy, for example, uh, if you want to add this guy to the mix and now compute the inflection of this uh, linear series, then you compute the determinantal version using the inflection uh, atomic polynomials uh, for the case uh, L equal G plus two. And the result uh, is the inflection uh, determines the inflectionary behavior of this linear series. And you can continue doing this. Uh, of course, the degree of the determinant is going to, is going to increase, but uh, in, in theory, it is possible to do it. So this is why uh, these, uh, these polynomials are very important because uh, they determine the other guys. Uh, and also, uh, so the, uh, the important thing is that uh, these uh, atomic inflection polynomials are also available for, for the case n plus n uh, greater than two. But now uh, it is a little bit more complicated since uh, L may vary between n, one and n plus n minus one. And now M is also another parameter that, uh, roughly speaking, uh, tells you how many functions are you are going to consider. So uh, these are two parameters, right? The, the parameter L tells you the stage in which you are, uh, I mean, in the X, uh, Y, and M tells you how many functions uh, to, the, to the right you are going to consider. Right, let me, let me go back to my, to my drawing. So here, remember that here, what, what we are doing from here from, to the general case is adding stacks here. And 
adding some other functions here, right? But the, you are going to end up with some sort of stair, stair shaped function, a stair shaped form. And then L controls this parameter and M controls this parameter. So using this, uh, these two parameters, you may, you may uh, compute these polynomials. And uh, the definition is the same. I mean, it is the mth derivative of y to the l expresses as some factor, uh, which is not very relevant since these two guys are linked again by the equation uh, y to the n equals f. So this expression is almost uh, irrelevant since uh, from this condition, but also uh, away from the ramification locus, they are invertible. So uh, this is, these are units uh, uh, in whatever ring we are working. Um, and now, a property, right? The property is the following theorem. Uh, not only these polynomials satisfy this equation, but they satisfy a recursive relation. And this is this is the, the strong point of, of this uh, uh, atomic inflection polynomial, since you may compute uh, the case M plus one out of the case M. So this is the content of the theorem. If you uh, consider this uh, super elliptic curve, recall that Y to the N equals to some product of linear factors. The linear factors are encoded by F. And uh, so the recursion rule is very simple. Uh, of course, uh, if you care about positive characteristic, there are some uh, things that you may uh, you may check before during this computation, but uh, in general, if you are away from conflictive characteristics, uh, this is valid, right? Uh, again, I, I am not including here the hypothesis, not just uh, to be more, uh, to be less technical, but uh, it tells you that, uh, the, the next step uh, of your polynomial, you just have to take the derivation of the previous and multiply by the local equation of your curve plus some factor of, of this is almost the Leibniz rule, right? This is almost the product rule. If it weren't for this factor, it, it would be, uh, the product rule. Unfortunately, there is, there is, or fortunately, there is a factor here which appears as a constant. And then you take the product of your polynomial and the derivation of your, uh, of your equation that defines your curve. And uh, you start with uh, the initial condition. Uh, and U here is just a quotient of uh, L, which is one of the uh, datums uh, of these inflection polynomials and n is the degree of ramification. So starting from u times the derivation of your local expression, you can start doing this procedure to go as far as you want, right? And then again, why do we care about this? Because these uh, guys not only compute the higher uh, instances of inflection or of, of, uh, of this linear series, but also uh, they compute some inflection. Uh, and it is particularly interesting to see that this linear series is not complete, right? So I am taking away here everything but the power of Y, which interests me, which is this one. And if I compute the roots of these polynomials, then uh, it, it is going to give me information about the inflection of this linear series on this curve. 
away, of course, away from from uh, the place over which it ramifies. So uh, I'm sorry, this is kind of technical, but I just want you, I want you just to to keep track of the recursive or recursive formula and the definition, which is not very hard. Uh, you just express the mth derivative of some function, some power of some function as a product. Uh, and the factor that, G, that uh, expresses this as a, as, a true, as a true statement is what we call the inflection polynomial. So the definition is there and uh, procedure to compute them is below. Uh, unfortunately, we, we haven't had so much time to compute concrete uh, uh, instances of these polynomials, but it is possible starting from, in fact, you start from, from your equation. I mean, here it says that, uh, that uh, the starting point is your equation. So, uh, once you have your equation, you make it you make it evolve along this rule, and this is the roots of these polynomials are telling you the inflection of some linear series, right? Associated to some particular choice of monomials of your basis. So that's the this is the example that I wanted to to tell you this uh, session. And uh, in general, we don't have examples for what happens, for example, to the case in equal three. Uh, only, only we have we have managed to understand a little bit about the case in equals two, but there 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 is some some work for the future. And now, uh, just to finish my 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 intervention, uh, I will discuss uh, a little bit about. Uh, families uh, uh, of inflectionary curves. Uh, in this sense, we are going to introduce a parameter uh, on these polynomials, and we are trying to check or compute or say something about the algebraic curve that uh, originates. And of course, since these polynomials uh, are depending on on a parameter, and uh, they are just the formations of inflection polynomials. Uh, this this polynomial keeps track of the inflection along the family defined by by the parameter. Uh, so, in general, these uh, constructions are available for any number of fin any finite number of parameters that you want. But the simplest case is when you uh, just pick one one parameter, and this is what we do. Uh, so first, uh, let me uh, tell you about a result from uh, Ethan, uh, Ignacio, and Chango. They have studied this uh, particular case for the reals, and uh, they pick this particular expression for a Bayer's transpensive, which is this one, right? So you take a Bayer stress equation and specialize one of the parameters, you let vary the other, and this gives you a pencil, this gives you a family of elliptic curves. And the question is how the inflection of this uh, linear series moves along this family. So they have a, a pretty conjecture here uh, about the nature of the inflection points uh, when you uh, look at this particular example. Uh, of course, uh, I. I should start here by saying but uh, that you uh, raise the value minus three because for minus three, uh, you get a singular curve. Uh, so away from minus three, you have a either uh, less than minus three or more than minus three, there is a difference of behavior. Uh, according to the number or of the inflection polynomial that you are uh, considering, uh, either your atomic inflection polynomial is odd, you have here some conjecture about the real number points of inflection, real inflection points which appear on the particular curve. And they have, been, they have done uh, this uh, analysis uh, very uh, carefully. But uh, uh, anyway, so uh, 
if the inflection polynomial is belongs to an odd index and the parameter is uh, less than minus three, then uh, they conjecture that there should be four uh, inflection points uh, which are real, or uh, I mean uh, four uh, values uh, of the roots which are uh, positive. And then you take this uh, positiveness of uh, the evaluation of the function on the particular root of the inflection polynomial to discriminate uh, if it can be lifted to a real uh, inflection point or not, because you need square roots uh, of real numbers. Also, there is the even case. Uh, it's half uh, over the right, over the left part of minus three, the left interval uh, determined by minus three. And there is uh, another uh, behavior with these are the, part, the possible values of, uh, of these uh, positive roots of the inflection polynomial, uh, which you may which you may get. So uh, the the behavior is very different uh, uh, away uh, to the left or to the right, and if if m is odd or even. Uh, this is something uh, similar to what I presented you uh, for elliptic curves at the at the start of, of my talk. So again, here, this is part of, of the research. Uh, here, they, they are putting together uh, the inflationary curves for some particular cases of M. Uh, here, M is equal to N and 10. And uh, one of them is the inflationary curve defined for this pencil. And uh, the region is where uh, the function that defines your by stress cubic is positive. And the other shaded region is when uh, the derivative of the polynomial is positive. So this, this is in order to support the previous conjecture about the behavior of, uh, of the number of real points uh, of the uh, inflection points associated to this um, uh, inflectionary polynomials, which I recall you, they, they, are not, they are not complete series. They are incomplete series on elliptic curves. So this is, these are not torsion. These are not uh, torsion points. I mean, these are not, uh, yeah, torsion points. These are something else. Um, so in this case, uh, this is why uh, inflection polynomials generalize somehow torsion points on elliptic curves. Anyways, uh, let me go. Uh, okay, so the, here there is some striking fact that the, the the singularity, which is the point uh, minus three over uh, the y-axis, lambda axis here, the vertical axis is minus three. There is a singularity of the pencil uh, and the topology of the curve is controlled in some sense by this uh, singularity, right? So uh, this tells you that we should uh, pay attention to the, to the singularities, singularities of the inflationary curves. And this is what uh, we did in our paper. Uh, we conjectured that for, for this particular pencil, again, the same as always, why, I mean, now here, this is y to the n. But uh, there is a parameter lambda and two is fixed, right? This is a bayer strass pencil for super elliptic curves. Uh, we conjectured that the, the, the whole inflationary curve is going to have just three singularities. And these uh, three, three singularities are uh, the same and that they are, uh, uh, the local picture of the singularity is given by this Newton polygon. This is the local, poly, the local Newton polygon of each one of these singularities. And we conjecture that these uh, singularities are Newton non-degenerate in the sense that the roots of the points uh, that, I mean, the restriction of the polynomial to this um, guy, which has several uh, uh, interior points, you take the polynomial, you take this, this side gamma, and you restrict this uh, 
to gamma, uh, Newton non-degenerate uh, means that this is separable. And why do we care about this is because um, Newton non-degenerate singularities are, can be solved by toric geometry. And if, this, if that's the case, then uh, this is, a, this is a, a fan, uh, which gives you a toric uh, modification of the fine plane. And if you take the strict transform of your singularity via the pullback of this uh, um, uh, modification, you solve the singularity. Uh, so the strict transform of the singular point becomes uh, uh, toric invariant um, with uh, torus invariant with uh, normal crossing divisors uh, in this modification. So uh, this was to be expected because since we are working on arbitrary characteristic, it is natural to, to come up with some toric technology to solve uh, these kind of problems. But I repeat and I stress that this is a conjecture. We are not 100% sure that uh, this curve is uh, smooth away from these three points, and we are not completely sure that uh, the, the singularity is Newton non-degenerate. I mean that this polynomial is separable, but we have some computations to back up our, our intuition. Uh, and I would say that that's all. Thank you. So um, first of all, yeah, thank you, Christian, for the for the talk. Um, does anybody have questions? Please feel free to unmute your your microphone. So I, I just have a comment about that last conjecture, actually. So, um, I mean, the, the point of the conjecture basically is that, uh, is that the singularities of these inflectionary curves that come from pencils uh, is basically that the, that the only singularities are inherited from the, the discriminants of the underlying pencils. Um, so it, that's sort of why we expect it to be true. Um, in this particular case, the point is that the, the discriminant of this x cubed plus lambda x plus two um, uh, the, the well the the pencil of uh, the pencil of these super elliptic curves is uh, is exactly singular in um, in sort of the pre-images of these points that are singled out in the conjecture. And the conjecture is sort of that there are, that there are only these obvious singularities and no, and no other. Uh -huh. Um, questions for questions for Christian. Okay, so um, I guess if there aren't any questions, um, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks so much, Christian, again. So thank you. And yeah, and